we're going to now uh, install the spars. The first, the first one we install is the spine. That's the first one that goes right up against the skin of the kite. And we could use a photo corner here, but I'm just going to use a piece of tape. Uh, and I'm going to use a relatively square piece, or maybe just the rectangle. This is a, a repair tape that's used. You can get it in kite stores online, and it uh, is made by Icarex, I think, or one of the sail-making fabric companies. It's a fabric tape that's quite sticky, bonds well to almost everything. It's very flexible to go around a spar like this. And then I just tape it down right here. Then the leading edge, I'll open up, I'll use a toothpick and open up one of these uh, photo corners and slip that in as far as I can get it to go. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now if the spar you made, this one is uh, just a little bit longer than it needs to be, but uh, if you can get it the right length, in fact I think I'll sand a little bit of that off because uh, it is just a little bit too long. Find my sandpaper here. If the spars are a little too long, what they will do is tension the skin in a way that will cause wrinkles in the skin. And although those wrinkles aren't going to do an awful lot of damage or harm to the kite flight or anything, it's better if you don't have them. Next we're going to install the cross spars, and those go right up in the corner of the leading edge uh, photo corners. And then they uh, are then put into these trailing edge photo corners. Push them in as tight as possible. And this one, as you can see, is a little bit too long. So I'll sand it off again, too. And uh, see how we do this time. One thing about carbon fiber is that if you if you rotate a piece of carbon fiber, you'll notice that it will kind of bounce from when it's under tension like this. It'll kind of bounce or jump from one part of its uh, rotation. If you just rotate it between your fingers, it'll jump. And you want, you want this to be in a natural position, and that's one of the reasons why having these uh, photo corners is good, because they allow it to twist to find its own uh, natural bending place where it, where it is naturally bent, and that's what you want. You don't want to distort the bending of it. You want it to be natural. Otherwise, the kite will have a different amount of uh, stiffness in one of the crossbars compared to the other, and you don't want that. And here we have just a little bit too, too long a spar here. Still, even after I sanded it. And I'm going to sand that off again. try it again here. Now that's still a little bit too long, I think. Yeah, it's, it bumps. That's, at these upper corners, uh, the spars bump into the leading edge, which it's supposed to, but they can be uh, whatever the diameter of the spar is, in this case 0 0.05 of the leading edge, that's going to uh, mean that the crossbar should be that much 
shorter uh, in order to just naturally lay on the kite surface. Now I could spray water on my table and have the skin tight. I don't do that with bukas because they're relatively uh, easy to work with and they don't have uh, spars that are under tension. I'm going to use uh, a few pieces of tape to secure these. Uh, I guess I'll use one right here at the corner, a square piece basically. I think here, get it off the tape uh, backing. And I'm just going to put that right on top of the uh, photo corner, right along the uh, sp uh, spar, the cross spar, burnish it on both sides, and then just rub it down good. And I'll do that on the other side as well. And uh, you could use any kind of tape. This, this I like because it's uh, very flexible. And it bonds pretty well, and that's very important. But generally, the when you tape it, you want to be sure. And you can see here that the that the spars aligned on the cross. I, I drew a cross line or cross, uh, yeah, line of the location of these cross spars from corner to corner. And I and it helps to align them when you're taping them down. So now we have the spine in place. We have the cross bars in place. We have everything going except the leading edge is not yet bonded to the fabric. Before we do that, we want to cut a uh, notch in the skin. And we want to do it right here. And it doesn't have to be much, but just enough so that when the skin is folded over the spine, it, uh, it can fall on either side and bond to either side after it's folded over here. So now I'll just peel off the backing of that carpet tape and lift the whole thing up a little bit to help do that. And just peel that off. And now that uh, is Ex oops, is exposed tape, sticky side up, and uh, so we need to be a little bit careful that we don't, uh, yeah, right, there we go. So now you want to be sure that the skin is smooth spines located correctly, then you just press it down onto the tape. Pretty simple. And then uh, you can use a toothpick or almost anything. Now you'll notice we did not put tape over here onto the uh, very ends. Uh, and we'll take care of that later. I press down on the spine and on the leading edge spar and then just fold over one section at a time and then just press it down and as I do I want to be sure that the hem goes around the back side or the side of the uh, leading edge spar that's towards the tail of the kite so it really wraps around securely and bonds it well and we'll do the same on the other side so this is relatively uh, simple process. There isn't anything complicated about making a buka. And like I say, it can take uh, an hour or so. Maybe less once you make one. Get used to it. So now, we're going to add a few pieces of tape on each spar and up at the spine, just to make sure they stay in place. 